So, the earthquakes in Iceland, are they tearing the island apart? Hopefully not. Let's start with a full picture of the North Atlantic Ridge. This is the area where two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. So they're not crashing into each other like a subduction zone or like sliding alongside each other like the San Andreas Fault. They're moving away from each other. And by doing that, they're making room for magma from the surface to come up. And look at these earthquakes. This is just all these earthquakes along this ridge going through the Reykjanes Peninsula. And there have been a lot of them and there have been higher ones. Some even said that it's like magnitude five or something. Then they later reports were 4.5, then 3 point something. So we definitely, definitely have to look into this. Because right now, it's not only the Sutnuka Crater series where we have seen all these earthquakes and eruptions basically since a year ago, since November 10th. Nope, it's been rumbling at Fagradalsfjall, now at Klaifavatn, then at Bardabunga, in these areas, the Krizovic system, that is a volcanic system that has sent lava flows in the part past towards outskirts of Reykjavik and then there's the Bluffjöll area, there's a ski area, the Bluffjöll um, volcanic system that can send lava flows down there. So it seems it's like active everywhere and you've seen my video maybe that they wanted to build a new airport because the Reykjavik airport is at a very, it's too small, but you know then they placed it basically right where the next large Sudnuka crater serious eruption could even send the lava flows over that area. So they spent millions on a study that is basically useless in my opinion and Thowald Thowaldson was very upset about this. So all the details about this are in the end screen in, in that video. Really check it out. It's kind of like really, really strange. But what is going on? It's, we're seeing earthquakes in the southwest and we're seeing earthquakes in the north of Iceland. So basically what we can say um, it was really a rumbling day today in Iceland or around Iceland if you look at where the earthquakes are also located um, along this North Atlantic Ridge. So several earthquakes occurred in the morning um, in a fracture zone that's called the Curnus Fracture Zone. Um, there's roughly where a lot of cracks, a crack system um, that's north of Iceland merges into a system, into a ridge that is called the Kolbinze Ridge. But basically it is the North Atlantic Ridge where the two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. Um, so, and then there was this controversy that I just mentioned. Um, many seismic institutions have given different magnitudes about this. So the Icelandic Metrological Office says the magnitude in this area was 3.2, then another institution um, puts it at 4.5, and initially it was even reported at 5.2. The depth of the earthquake's epicenter is said to have been at 10 kilometers, and the epicenter was located 30 kilometers northeast of that island Kolbenze. It's basically a rock, a big rock, so to speak. But then in the late afternoon in Iceland, another earthquake swarm happened and that was even stronger. You see here all the red in the pictures that I show you later that are at a later time, they turn into blue. That is basically just how many hours away. If it's red, it happened in the last four hours, right? So the second much stronger earthquake swarm occurred on the opposite of Iceland, right? On the opposite of the other swarm, basically off the southwest coast on the Reykjanes Ridge. So most of the epicenters were south southwest of another group of island rocks, how you call them, um, near the island of Elde. You might know Elde, I've reported about this. There's a species of rare birds that are breeding there, and this is really a rock. You can't use this island for nothing, right? So there are several rocks. It's a group of rocks. They're called Elde Yarbodi, or 
or similar like that. I'm not sure that I pronounced this right. So um, this area has earthquakes on a regular basis as it is right on the North Atlantic Ridge. But in recent months, we've seen several swarms of earthquakes that have started there at an interesting timing because these swarms happened about a month before a new eruption was starting in the Sudnuka crater series. And the big question is, is that somehow related? So are these earthquake swarms now an indication that the next eruption in the Sudnuka crater series is near? I mean, we know the land is already rising. It has accelerated again after the last eruption ended. So we're definitely going to see something, most likely another eruption. And if you've seen my other videos, the experts are saying the next eruption could be bigger. It could last longer, so it could send more lava flow. If it's happening further north than the last one, the main artery highway between Keflavik Airport and the capital Reykjavik could be destroyed by lava flow. So if it's going further south, it could destroy Grindavik because if it's lasting longer and it's sending even more lava, the defense walls will not hold it back. So definitely there is a pattern between the earthquake swarms at Elde and then an eruption following, but there's no scientific evidence, guys, right? This is just a striking pattern that catches your eye and, and people are wondering, but it cannot be scientifically explained. But what can really be explained on the Reykjanes Peninsula, right? Not much. This volcano is playing cats and mouse or cat and mouse with the scientists there. So scientists often admit they know that they don't know. They don't say it that drastically, but from what they say, this is the conclusion that I draw. So since we have that land rise underneath Swartzengi, that puts stress on the areas around it, right? If the crust is stretched any further, this can get into other areas. So will that affect neighboring systems that Rikian is rich, for example? Is that what it is? Could be. And the same thing, is that land rise underneath Swartzengi affecting the Krizovic system? Is that why we see increased earthquake activity there? But it could also be that this is independent. And I want to look, have, want you to look at that map. That's an older map. So that was done before we've seen the recent eruptions in the Sutnuka crater series. But all these little lines there, all the lines, these are fractures, cracks. So this is not really super stable. So if there is tension coming, these cracks could go wider, longer, deeper. Could that cause rumbling? Who knows? But it is very much possible that the land rise in Swartzengi is not responsible for these other earthquake swarms. So that we could see independent processes going on in these areas. We had over 175, 180 tremors in whole of Iceland in the last 48 hours. And over 70 earthquakes were detected just in the Reykjanes Peninsula area. So a lot is still going on there. But also we've seen earthquakes in Krizovik again, in Fagradalsfjall again, but basically along the Sudnuka crater series parallel to that. So yeah, it's a waiting game. We have to wait and see what's going to happen. I thought I'll update you about this. Check out my videos about the hurricane Milton that is, I don't can't even say blasting, storming, running towards Florida and is said to cause massive, massive destruction. People are evacuating now and uh, this is, category five, maybe even category six, it keeps changing, but it's it's an unprecedented storm that has basically doubled in intensity so quickly and uh, is expected to hit Tampa, Tampa Bay, and then move over central Florida towards the Atlantic. And it's they think it's going to cause 100 billion US dollars or more in damage, but 
we're just hope and pray that everyone gets out because it's very, very clear and the officials have made it very clear. If you stay, you will die. It's not survivable. So we just hope they can all get out in time, that they have enough gas, that the highways are not clogged, that they can get out. So check this out. But there's also another Campi Flegri update, a new study that is quite concerning, I would say, because it talks about the Caprock layer and the Caprock layer fracturing at an accelerated rate. So check out this video as well. They're both here in the end screen. And if you want to see all of them, which I would recommend, guys, subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and maybe even become a channel member to see more behind the scenes videos of me and my co-host, Rudy. If you're new here, you don't know who he is, but you will find out. So guys, stay safe wherever you are. I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.